Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord, Kumbaya. Oh, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's singing, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's singing, Lord. Kumbaya, someone singing, Lord, Kumbaya, oh Lord, Kumbaya. Let's begin with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace. We have so much to be thankful for today, this annual meeting weekend. This is the, the most holy time of years, the time that those whom you choose and who choose to accept your invitation come before you and renew their vows the vows that you have given us through your spiritual messengers of God. And we have been so blessed, Lord God, so blessed to know you beyond anything we could ever imagine we could because you give your gift of spirit and life 
to dwell within our hearts and minds forever. And this is your covenant with us, that we be your people and you be our God. does the seven candle candelabra represent that we use in ordaining ministers? Spiritual messengers of God were asked on February 4th, 1972, shortly after they gave us the vows that we may say before God. Their answer? These should be used. And as we have said before, they are the seven spirits of God within yourself. As we have said before, open the door that we may enter, and we shall say once again, have faith, and you shall walk on the water with us. May 24th, 1975, the spiritual messengers of God told us, yet we should say unto you, your annual meeting is soon at hand. And shepherds shall become shepherds, and ministers shall become ministers, and teachers shall become teachers, and the seven candle candelabra shall be lit once again in unison. But remember, as you should all say the vows, say them from your heart. For those who are in the book of the beginning shall be in the book of the ending. That this may be done, as we have given unto thee the book with wings, the book of knowledge, we know that we have told unto thee many times of the lessons that we want thee to learn, and we shall give unto thee many examples of the same. On August 17, 1973, the spiritual messengers of God said to us, For within thy mind I have asked this question, Why cannot I see God? Why cannot I touch God? Does God laugh? Does he cry? And we shall answer your question in this manner. For if a man should go to the river and therefore find the water fair, and clean and unpolluted, he should drink from it. But yet, should another come, he may drink from the river also, but not in the same place. For you see, our Father is like the river. Yet he has made no rules that man should worship him. Man has done so. Yet our Father has given unto man free choice. And much as the man who should drink from different places in the river, yet drink of the same water, one may drink from a cup, another a tin, another a plate or a bowl, or another from his hands. And each may think within their minds that this is the only way to drink of the water. And we say unto thee, Because a man drinks from the water different than yourselves, should you make war upon him? And we should say, Nay, for this is but for children. For it has been said, Come unto me as a child. And you say unto us, Does this mean we must return back unto our father's womb, our mother's womb? And we say unto thee, Nay, but for those who should know of the earth must know of heaven, and those who must know of heaven must know of earth.
finally about the vows. But once I have taken the vows, let no man put asunder that the God has given, for thou shalt be a minister for all planes, for all times. And then January 7th, 1972, before the vows were given, we were reminded by the spiritual messengers of God of an oath another day in service to God. But we say unto thee, do not confuse this one they call with Jesus, with God, for he is the Son of God, but he is not God. And as a good son should, he does give servitude unto his Father and glory unto the same. It is wise unto thee to ask, or is this one Jesus, as thou would know him, should serve as a priest of the high priest of Methotop for all time? But we should say unto thee that we are here to prepare the way. We are here to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. And the Messiah shall be a servant of his Father. Then live each day of their lives and await his coming. For as he called thee before, he should call thee again. Please, Father, bless all of your flock, all of the people, all of the members of the Association of Universal Philosophy, whom you sent your spiritual messengers of God to form in the preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Bless all of the teachers and ministers who renew the vows that you have given. And the last one is, are we prepared to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah? It must be prepared first within each individual soul who stands before God and renews a covenant with God. And then, in that same manner, it can be shared and shine out from the heart to others who themselves may choose to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah within themselves first and then within others. And in this way, a new heaven and a new earth shall be born upon the earth, and we shall see a thousand years of peace as God counts and each day shall be as a thousand years, and we shall see the coming of the Messiah and his reign upon earth, the new heaven and the new earth that is built and being built within the hearts and souls and minds of men and women who choose. Here is a parable the spiritual messengers of God Akka gave, April 21st, 1978. Story stand with God. Yes, we see thy need. And we shall answer in this manner. Glory be the name of the Lord. Glory be the name of his children. And we shall say unto thee the parable of the three shepherds. They ventured far because 
words that had been written in the stars that the meeting of the three would be of great importance to the world. And upon the meeting place, each made his camp separate from the other. And he sent their servants forward to discuss the terms of the meeting and who should sit in what position. And the servants began to squabble, saying that each of their masters was greater than the other and therefore should have a place of honor. But finally it was decided that each would sit in the exact same position that he had camped in, facing the others. So they came forward, each introducing himself to the other. And they began to discuss of worldly things, of war and peace, and the rain and the earth cycles of winter and summer and spring. Yet not one word was mentioned of God. And suddenly before them there was a shadow. The shadow was long before the fireplace. Each stirred and looked up, for he was sure that the other had brought an assassin upon him. But when they looked up, there stood a man with the cane of a shepherd. Yet in his eyes was a twinkle and a smile. And he said unto them, Why are you afraid? I have come not to harm you. And each of them said unto him, But you are not invited. For we are the three shepherds. We are the great ones. We are the leaders. We are the teachers. The stranger stood quiet and said, But did you not come here to seek God? And did each of you tell your people when you left that that was your sole purpose, to seek out the wisdom of God? Each said, Yes. This is true. Then the stranger said, Then you invited me. For I am the light of God. I bring peace and love from my Father to his children. He 
each of the shepherds beckoned to their servants to be ready with weapons to attack the stranger. And the stranger turned his hand backward and forward and said, and opened his cloak and said, I have no weapons. Why do you fear me? I have come not to harm you. I have come but for one purpose, to tell unto you the arrival upon your earth of a new Messiah, that you might go back and give this gift unto your people. Each spoke and said, But how do we know you are not of Satan? Who are your credentials? The stranger said unto them, I have no credentials. The only credentials I have is my faith in my Father and yours. My love for my God and you. My hope that you shall receive the message I have come to bear you. And that you shall bear witness unto his arrival and bring the word unto your people. Each said unto the shepherd stranger, We must think. And they departed back into the tents. Then none of them invited the stranger into the tent. They left him into the cold of the night. He stood. And in the morning light, all light substance gathered around him. And warmth grew from him. And the servants came forth unto him. And did kneel unto him. And he said, Rise. Do not bow unto me. Bow unto your Lord, God. Give him thanks for your day and your daily bread. Give him thanks for the sun and the rain. And take unto your people the wisdom I have spoken. Each of the servants from the three camps promised they would. As he turned and began to leave, the three shepherds came out and said, Why have you given unto our servants a message to live? unto the people. And they said unto him, For the last shall come first, and blessed be the meek, for they shall give unto the people. Yet blessed be the strong, that they shall help the meek. But here I give unto you before I depart. Each of you this gift from my father. And he handed each one a small rose. These were men who were used to receiving jewels. 
and handmaidens as gifts from kings and heads of nations. They looked at the rose, each casting it into the dirt. And yet when they looked up, the stranger was gone. Orders were given to break camp, but a handmaiden from each of the camps came forth and picked up the rose. And each promised to take it into their lands and nourish it. And so it came about that this was true. Word spread throughout each of their lands of the coming of a new Messiah. And the word spread and became the belief of the lands. And the kings of the three shepherds called him forth and said, You were sent to meet with the other shepherds, yet you brought us no knowledge of this. The shepherd said, But this is a false messiah. He should be destroyed and those who should believe in him should be destroyed. Send forth your armies and attack the other nations. Drive out the people in our land who believe in this. For they should be persecuted. And so it came about in great wars and rumors of wars did play the land. Yet the faith within these people stayed. And as they grew together, <coughs> the people who were cast out of the nations shall be greater than all the gold and jewels and riches of your earth altogether. For if our mission should come about in fulfillment of the same, 
thousand years of peace shall reign upon the earth and into the universe and galaxies and all shall know each other in love. Thank you, Father, for guiding us to read this parable today. It has true meaning and is very fitting for all of us who receive and all of those who believe and have faith and hope in the coming of the Messiah. Now I'd like to pray for those who are in need, who have come in need, as they seek, so may they find. As they ask, Father, may they receive. As they knock, may the door be opened unto them. And may their gifts from you, God, of love, wisdom, faith, knowledge, hope, and healing of body, soul, and spirit in the mortal body. Be all come in abundance, be all this one part. Bless those people, Lord God, who listen to you. Bless them of all faiths and all ways. And help them to know the truth of your love. And that you do not want them to make war among each other but to work together in peace and harmony to prepare a new heaven and a new earth upon the earth. A thousand years of peace as God counts and the coming of the Messiah. Please, Lord God, these are not just words. This is our greatest need upon earth. all times, but especially at this time when the world hangs in the brink. Please, Lord God, reach into the hearts and minds and souls of many and help them to choose you and to serve you and to prepare a way for the Messiah and not choose Lucifer are preparing a way for the Antichrist. May thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May thy will be done within many hearts and minds and souls. Help us to hear. Help us to know you. Help us to feel God. And to know that you laugh and you cry for all of your children. May there be peace on earth. Glory be the name of the Lord. Glory be the name of his children forever and ever. I shall sing your praises, Lord. Fill me with your love, O Lord. You have been forever, Lord, and I shall sing for joy. Jesus came into Galilee and proclaimed the gospel of God. The time has come. The kingdom of God is upon you. Repent and believe the gospel. He said it is written in Mark, the gospel according to Mark. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw Simon and his brother Andrew on the lake at work with a casting net, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat overhauling their nets. He called them, and 
leaving their father and somebody in the boat with the hired men, they went off to follow him. This is how it is for us today. The spiritual messengers of God whom he asked the Father to send are here to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah. But first, the way must be prepared within our hearts and minds and souls. So then, would you like to join with the spiritual messengers of God in the preparation for the coming of the Messiah? For they welcome you with open arms and they hope that you will hear their message and will come and join. We asked you this question For we have come to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. If the Lord asks you tomorrow to pick up everything you had or leave it behind and go forth and serve a baby, would you do so? Would you have the faith in your heart to do this to leave your family to leave your friends to leave the country into which you knew so well to journey into a foreign land to serve you had never seen. It may sound strange that we have brought this question to you, but we send to you, each of you, look deeply in your heart and in your soul. See if in truth you could do this. Ask yourself the questions we have brought forth tonight. spread rapidly and he was soon spoken of all over the district of Galilee. On leaving the synagogue, they went straight into the house of Simon and Andrew, and James and John went with them. Simon's mother-in-law was ill in bed with a fever. They told him about her at once. He came forward, took her by the hand, helped her to her feet. The fever left her and she waited upon them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by devils, and, her, and the whole town was there, gathered at the door. He healed many who suffered from various diseases and drove out many devils. He would not let the devils speak because they knew who he was. Very early, the next morning he got up and went out in prayer. He went out. He went away to a lonely spot and remained there in prayer. But Simon and his companions searched him out, found him and said, They are all looking for you. He answered, Let us move on to the country towns in the neighborhood. I have to proclaim my message there also. That is what I come out to do. So all through Galilee he went, preaching in the synagogues and casting out the devils.
Once he was approached by a leper who knelt before him, begging his help. If only you will, said the man, you can cleanse me. In warm indignation, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, Indeed, I will be clean again. The leprosy left him immediately and he was clean. Then he dismissed him with this stern warning. Be sure you say nothing to anybody. Go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering laid down by Moses for your cleansing. That will certify the cure. But the man went out and made the whole story public. He spread it far and wide until Jesus could no longer show himself in any town, but stayed outside to the open country. Even so, people kept coming to him from all quarters. Well, many of you know how the Association of Universal Philosophy began to be formed. You see, there was a man named Ray Elkins who was dying. He went before a place where many people were standing before one seated on a throne who had more love in his eyes than anyone he had ever seen. He knew he could trust this one as he had trusted no one before. Words were not needed. Words were not spoken. This one, with that love in his eyes, gave Ray a gift. And he also gave him a choice to remain there with all the others standing before him or to return back to his body and life on earth. But if he returned back to his body, nothing would be changed. The pain would still be there, the suffering. All that had been before would continue. Yet, if he chose to come back, he was asked to give this gift to others in the same manner it had been given to him, freely, asking nothing in return. And so, he chose to come back, and woke up hungry to the shock of everyone around who was crying and the ambulance had already been called to take him away. But his life began anew and the gift that he didn't know what it was that he had been given began to speak through him and people began to come to him for counsel and guidance. And the gift, which later he learned were the spiritual messengers of God, Adka, who are sent to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah for this time on earth. They counseled, they saw the needs of the people who came and all who asked, they answered, they counseled, they gave healing, they gave guidance, they gave healing to the body, soul, spirit, and immortal body, that a way might be prepared within each person who came so that they would recognize and know the Messiah when he comes. So for the next 19 years, from 1970 to 1989, that gift spoke and healed and counseled and worked and lived 
Luther Ray the gift of the spirit that had been given to him by that one with more love in his eyes than anyone he'd ever seen who asked the Father to send those who know him best that his words not be misinterpreted and that a way be prepared for the coming of the Messiah. And we have seen this, so many of us. Thousands of people came for healing. Ray worked day and night, seven days a week, counseling healing. The gift grew in him and it worked directly through him. He didn't always have to leave his body and go and stand with God where he had gone the first time when the gift was given to him that the spiritual messengers of God could come in the same manner like Jacob reports in the Bible uh, and speak and work and talk to him. We've recorded their messages for 19 years, about 450 hours of messages. And we share that and we share from scriptures because the meaning is the same and it is all from the same Father, God. So those who make the vows to God and covenant with Him to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah, first within themselves and then within others, and those who have not made vows but who love God, all are welcome to come before the Father. Never is anyone's faith asked because that is how it is in heaven and that is how it is when the Messiah comes and will come. But how will we know him unless we hear from those who know him best and we learn from his teachings and from the teachings of the messengers he sends. That is our blessing, how blessed we are, how incredibly blessed we are. So many people receive healing, stay for a while, got to know the man, didn't really understand even any more than the man did when he first received the gift who it was speaking to them sometimes, who it was who healed them from God. It was, the man was humble and very plain and honoring and not anyone you would expect to be. Well, I guess Jacob wrestled with an angel. So, people thinking in earthly terms only thought of a man, but they were not seeing just a man. And a man was serving with all his life and all his energy to heal people and to do what God was guiding him to do when he listened to God. So, what does it mean to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah? And how do you do it? The vows that we have just given provide guidance in what we most need to know. The vows were given from the spiritual messengers of God. But each person knows God in his own heart, in his own way, in his own path. And they have not come to take man from path, his own path because that would be a sin. That would be the worst thing you could do to someone. Take them from their way of knowing God? No. They've come to build upon that faith, to add to what's already there, to help them to grow in their closeness to God and grow in spirit and love and know him better and to draw closer to him, that a way they be prepared for the coming of the Messiah. 
Mark chapter 2 says, When after some days he, Jesus, returned to Capernaum, the news went round that he was at home. And such a crowd collected that the space in front of the door was not big enough to hold him. I remember about 45 people a day came to Ray's front door every day for years for healing and guidance and counsel for their needs. Because when gifts of the Spirit, gifts of God gives, people know it's real, they feel it in their hearts and they see by the evidence of the deeds themselves. And while he was proclaiming the message to them, a man was brought who was paralyzed. Four men were carrying him, but because of the crowd, they could not get him near. So they opened up the roof over the place where Jesus was. And when they had broken through, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralyzed man was laying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now there were some lawyers sitting there, and they thought to themselves, Why does that fellow talk like that? This is blasphemy. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew in his own mind that this was what they were thinking, and he said to them, Why do you harbor thoughts like these? Is it easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Stand up? Take your bed and walk. But to convince you that the Son of Man has the right on earth to forgive sins, he turned to the paralyzed man. I say to you, stand up, take your bed, and go home. And he got up and at once took his stretcher and went out in full view of them all so that they were astounded and praised God. Never before, they said, have we seen the like. Once more he went to the lake, away to the lakeside. All the crowd came to him and he taught them there. As he went along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, at his seat in the custom house, and he said to him, Follow me. And Levi rose and followed him. When Jesus was at table in his house, many bad characters, had tax gatherers and others, were seated with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some doctors of the law, who were Pharisees, noticed him eating in their bad company and said to his disciples, He eats with tax gatherers and sinners. Jesus heard it and said to them, Is it not the healthy that need a doctor? It is not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. I did not come to invite virtuous people, but sinners. Once when John's disciples and the Pharisees were keeping a fast, some people came to him and said, Why is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting? but yours are not. Jesus said to them, Can you expect the bridegroom's friend to be to fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, there can be no fasting. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth to an old coat. If he does, the patch tears away from it. The new from the old, and the leaves get bigger. Hole. It leaves a bigger hole. No one puts new wine in old wineskins. If he does, the wine will be burnt, will burst the skins, and then wine and skins are both lost. Fresh skin for the new wine.
On the Sabbath, he was going through the cornfields, and his disciples, as they went, began to pluck ears of corn. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is forbidden on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what Daniel did when he and his men were hungry and had nothing to eat? He went into the house of God in the time of Abuathar, the high priest, and ate the sacred bread, though no one but a priest is allowed to eat it, and he even gave it to his men. He also said to them, The Sabbath was made for the sake of man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is sovereign even over the Sabbath. Father, we ask that you bless the wine and the bread. We ask that you bless the new wine, the new wine that you have given, and the bread. And that we hear your message and that we each in our own way show you our love. I pray, Lord God, for all those people who are listening. I pray for all those who are members or who will become members of the Association of Universal Philosophy whom your spiritual messengers of God have asked us to form. I pray, Lord God, for the needs of your people, your flock, for those who have passed on. May they stand in our Father's light. We send those, Father God, to guide them, who know you best, to guide them into our Father's light, that they may walk with you forever and may prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah on that side. And may we walk with you here on earth. Please see to our needs, our financial needs, our healing, our body, soul, spirits, and mortal body. Please, Lord God, see to the needs of your flock and help us to become part of the army of the Messiah, those who prepare a way for your coming. For God is the God of the living, not of the dead, and so there is no death when one is with God. You have shown this to us in so many ways, Lord God. You showed it to Ray Elkins even at the first when he prayed for death, was given death, but was given the choice to return to life and give this gift to us and others in the same manner of love that was given to him. And now we share the words that you spoke, that you sent your messengers to speak. We share their teachings, we share this new one. Not to take from you all, not to change, but to add to what is already there. So the wine shall be our body, soul, spirit, and our mortal body, and the bread shall be the gift of life that comes from God to enter into man, that all may be whole. The wine shall represent the soul of man. The bread shall represent the spiritual form of God. If man should eat of both, then forever there shall remain the spirit of man.